Hello, everyone, and welcome to the July edition of Opening the Box. Today, we are going to talk about the Gordon Van Tyne Company of Davenport, Iowa. My name is Katie Reinhardt. I am the Special Collections Librarian at the Richardson Sloan Special Collections Center of the Davenport Public Library, and I will be your host today. We will be looking at the catalogs for building materials and home plans uh, for the Gordon Van Tyne Company that are in the special collections collections, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a single collection. It um, will be drawing on the, the catalog books in the open stacks. Uh, in addition to some to some other archival collections that include information about the Gordon Van Tyne Company, they were a um, mail order home company, and they also sold building materials. So we'll be looking at those two types of catalogs in chronological order, and. Um, and the, the discussion of that, of the history is based on um, a study of the Gordon Van Tyne company that was um, done by a man named Dale Waliki in 2002. So credit where credit is due. Um, first, I'll start with a brief history. Uh, the Gordon Van Tyne Company was actually um, a subsidiary of the Uriah and Roberts Company, which was founded in 1865 by Mr. Uriah and Roberts. Uh, his, he uh, started a sawmill and he was a manufacturer of millwork. And um, he passed away in the early 1890s. And the, um, the company passed to his sons, Edward and Horace. And um, the, the subsidiary of Gordon Van Tyne was um, meant to offer um, materials by mail order. Um, so that builders and consumers would be able to look at a catalog and purchase materials directly. And that would eliminate the middleman in the process. Um, so this is uh, two uh, images, cartoons from the portfolio of cartoons uh, as published by the Davenport Times in 1912 and 1913. And that is Edward on the right and Horace, uh, Edward on the left and Horace on the right. So accompanying um, Edward's cartoon was a verse by Irving C. Norwood that said, "'Tis not a bit of trouble now to own a comfy home, to settle down in happy style and never more to roam. You do not need to plan and build if of the job you're afraid. Just call up Robert on the phone and get one ready-made. At the time he was the president of the Gordon Van Tyne Company. And in 1913, this photograph of Horace was taken on the left uh, by the Hostetler studio. And of course, uh, Special Collections of the Davenport Public Library has an excellent collection of portrait photography by J.B. Hostetler of Davenport. 
um, the photograph. And, and Horace was actually the treasurer and general manager at that time. So also from the Hostetler collection is the photograph on the right. One of these cute little ones is Irene Stoltenberg, who was born in 1913 in Davenport. And she actually later worked for Gordon Van Tyne in the 1930s. So um, we're looking at two advertisements, one that appeared in the Daily Times in September of 1914, and another that appeared later, I believe in the 20s, um, in the Farm Journal. And this is how Gordon Van Tyne Company uh, succeeded, was that they were very, very um, good at advertising and they, and they spent a, quite a bit of their capital on advertising costs. So um, you'll see the, in the September 1914 ad, uh, it's testimonials from various uh, individuals in the Tri-Cities, which at that time would be Davenport, Moline, and Rock Island, who had uh, been very pleased with their uh, experience with the mail order business. And um, from our ephemera collection on the right is um, another advertisement that appeared in, appeared in the farm. So the Gordon Van Tyne Company produced several of these building materials catalogs. The earliest one we have in our collection is this reprint for, for the architectural details uh, um, catalog for 1915. And you can see that they offered all kinds of things you would need to improve your home or if you were building a new home. Uh, fully finished items like doors, windows, colonnades, uh, grills, metal ceilings, framed mirrors and builder's hardware. So here's a lock set. And um, as you can see, there's a little inset photo of the Black Hawk Hotel and it says, Gordon Van Tyne Company furnished all of the hardware on this beautiful $750,000 hotel. They also supplied roofing materials and for the exterior um, uh, millwork such as gable ornaments. And uh, they also, of course, manufactured things for farmers and other people. This is um, a curious thing I did not know about called a hotbed. Um, it's a sash that I guess was like a little greenhouse. So that's one of the interesting things in that catalog. Next up is the 1919 catalog of homes. The Gordon Van Tyne Company had had a had first offered prefabricated houses in 1910. Um, and 1912 was the was their first catalog called a grand book plan for everybody. Plans, specifications, bills of materials, and these were actually based 
um, designs coming from the architect William Radford in Chicago. And quite a few of the others were actually based on uh, designs by local Tri Cities architects or builders. Um, Gordon Van Tyne secured the rights to, to show them, to have, um, include those plans. And in 1914, uh, they, the, um, the company offered fully constructed houses in the Tri Cities area. So our earliest catalog is this one, um, the 1919 catalog. Um, and in order to compete with other companies, such as the Aladdin Company in Michigan and companies who are who were offering ready cut homes or pre-cut housing. Um, the Gordon Van Tyne Company in 1916, the ready cut system, that's, that's the, um, the name that they gave it in particular. Um, that was their brand. And these catalogs such as this one, 1919, two years later, you know, would include a full description of the ready cut system. They offered, also offered not ready cut materials. And on the right, you can see the Davenport plant, and there's lots of other interesting little photos in all of the catalogs that show um, workers in Davenport in different roles. Every catalog included an order blank like this one. And there was very often testimonials from other customers, like the ones we saw earlier for the building materials. And this is what an Ohio banker thinks of his Gordon Van Tyne home in 1919. So uh, the bungalows were a very popular style. Here's another one. And another service that Gordon Van Tyne offered was this free landscaping gardening service. And you can see that described on the left there. And down at the bottom, there's before and after. This catalog also featured full color uh, renderings of what various rooms in your house could look like with uh, fixtures and um, other features from Gordon Van Tyne. Now there's some kitchen cases on the left, woodwork, brickwork, blinds even. Uh, and again, some color renderings of doors, doorways, hardware, a buffet for your dining room table, and a stairway. The catalog also included plans for summer cottages. And these ready cut cottages for workmen and farmers and for miners and ranchers. They offered plumbing fixtures, heating systems, and electric light. Next up is the 1922 building. And this one invites you to come to Davenport and see for yourself 
the great, the vast stop of this great organization. And there's Davenport, the center of the world. And this very dapper gentleman making his way to our city. And this catalog features a cutaway drawing that shows exactly how the various um, cabinetry would work in kitchen and bathrooms. They also offered paint for um, interior and exterior, barn paint as well. You could see all the colors. This is the 1923 building materials catalog. Beautiful artwork on these materials catalog. And here's more testimonials, letters written to the Gordon Van Tine Company from all over the country. Jersey, Pennsylvania, Indiana. And the company also offered a wallpaper sample book. And this catalog actually included a sample of the wallpaper itself. Here's a color version of their. Uh, Roof, their different roofing materials. And they also had an indoor closet for those homes that are a chemical toilet, I guess um, you would call it. And uh, for those homes that did not have plumbing. In 1923, this uh, Holmes catalog of Holmes was published. This one is actually in our collection is a reprint in the Dover Books on Architecture series uh, from the Dover Publishing Company. And this is actually a 1925 catalog in our collection. That's and this includes a personal word from the president of the company, Edward Roberts. And some more explanation of how all the materials, all the lumber is, is marked and the instructions are, are very clear so it's easy to put things together. More testimonials. Here's um, some typical um, homes that were offered. Um, a four square home and another bungalow. This catalog had a color section showing um, the entrance, the entrance hall, what your living room, dining room, bedroom and porch might look like. And of course the kitchen and the bathroom with the built-in linen closet. The kitchen had one of those um, breakfast nooks. You could also purchase a garage when you bought, bought your home. And there are many lightning, lighting fixtures available, plumbing fixtures. I like the little narration at the top of someone easily installing things. 
And again, these catalogs are great for showing uh, the <clears throat> photographs of the different um, facilities of the company in Davenport and also in um, the state of Washington where they had a plant in St. Louis and in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So in the 1920s, they were very, very prosperous and expanding. Here's a letter that accompanied a 1926 catalog that we have in our collection. Um, and it is stamped from the Chicago office. Um, it's Mr. Uh, the manager of the Chicago office was E.P. Runquist at the time, and so they had very, they had offices all over the country, and they would send letters out like these um, from those branches. Nineteen twenty-eight building materials catalog. Here you can see um, on the right, the 1928 woman modeling the mirror door is, uh, her style is updated from the 1922 mirror door woman. And again, some kitchen cases. You could also get wallboard, which was like drywall, um, a special kind of room heater, and running water system for your home. This is the Catalog of Homes for 1932. Um, the, then this was the time of the depression and actually um, the company had offered a mortgage program in 1929, but after the stock market fell, um, they had too many defaults on houses they had financed. So in 1931, they had eliminated that program, but that was another service. Uh, they weathered the, the depression fairly well. Um, this catalog is a brand new set of plans. Here's an updated introduction to Horace Edward and the board of directors of the home, a little bit about the history, updated graphics, and it was typical that by now some of these model homes were actually in the colonial revival style and the bungalow had become, started to go out of fashion. Um, this particular catalog was focused on women. Um, here's some photographs of ways that um, your home could look beautiful and that the Gordon Van Tyne home meant you would save on housework and enjoy more leisure hours. There was a new group of homes that women helped design in this catalog, a series of homes. One of them was the Elm Cross series. And you could see the various um, 
uh, versions that you could design, you could have designed, you could have different exterior materials, wood clabberding, shingles. You can also see some brick and stucco. And here's another one called the Linwood series. The Gordon Van Tine Company uh, offered a architectural design service. You could have a home plan prepared for free by them, should none of the homes in this book suit you. And there was lots of lots of ways to customize your home, including this um, brick veneer finish. The 1935 Book of Homes was similar. This is the front and the back to, to the 1932, but this had even been updated with new graphics, explaining the services. Here's some of the typical new plans available. And I include these two four squares because they are named for Scott County Town, Walcott and Leclerc. This is the building materials catalog from 1937. A handy index to find everything you need for your home. And it references the catalog for 1935 that I just showed you for home, kitchen cabinets, other modern conveniences, such as you could get a corner cupboard or a laundry chute. Insulation was also offered. And these are actual paint samples that were pasted on card in the center of the catalog. The 1939 Book of Homes was um, the 1930 Nine Book of Homes included this model home, which was uh, in Davenport, I believe. You could come and take a look. And this was the 1941 Book of Homes. Sales had improved. Um, by, by 1939 and 1940 for the company, thanks to a big advertising campaign. And this catalog includes some of the new home models that were a little more modest. The Lorraine and the Concord, just one story homes with very few rooms, slightly fancier, the Warren and the Fulton. The Diana uh, introduced some modern elements, but you could also get it in a more traditional style at the bottom. And then there was the more modern. Some larger homes with two stories included the Orleans. During the war, 
the Gordon Van Tyne Company was able to uh, do some building in Bettendorf. We have a collection from the Davenport, city of Davenport of photographs of the building project that they did. Um, homes, small, some of these small homes that are like the ones we saw in the 1941 catalog that were um, that were erected in Bettendorf between 20th and 21st streets. You can still see a few of the few of these now. And here are the photos from the city collection. This is the 1945 to 46 building materials. Um, catalog, and there wasn't a lot you could get, as you can see from this insert on the right here. Building materials here because they were had been needed for the defense in the, during the war, and there were. There's a notice about restrictions on the manufacture of bronze, and that's why some of the hardware was unavailable. Here's some more kitchen cabinetry, and there was a um, pine paneling that you could get by this time. and storm windows and doors. So by 1844, um, so by this time um, in 1946, when this catalog was out, um, Horus uh, had taken over in 1946 from his brother Edward, who died in California. Um, and he sells the company to a man named Sidney Rose of Cincinnati. Um, he just missed the building boom, um, but he was um, frustrated by the, the fact that the government had set prices on building materials pretty low um, because of the war. And unfortunately, Rose liquidated the company and sold up all the assets. And in 1947, uh, the lumber yard in both Moline and Rock Island closed. Um, the one in Bettendorf stayed open just a little while longer. And this photograph is from the Putnam Museum showing the complex in Davenport uh, in 1948. It was estimated that 1,000 model and custom design homes have been built in Davenport, Bettendorf, Rock Island, and Moline by the time the company uh, had been sold. I'm gonna stop this here before I talk about uh, farm buildings and barns that the Gordon Van Tyne Company produced. Um, um, but for now, thank you. And uh, remember to contact us at Special Collections if you have any questions.